Hello everyone, this video is going to be a little different. A while back my YouTube friends Courtney and Seth from the Jackson Travels had to replace their living room TV. Their new TV is really nice, but they haven't thrown out the old one yet. Recently, they've been working on setting up a new home studio for recording and editing videos. So this got us thinking. I wonder if we could fix that old TV. Because who couldn't use an extra screen in their studio, right? In this video, I'll be showing the complete process of diagnosing and repairing a faulty TV. I'll also be covering the most common points of failure and potential repairs for cheap televisions. Additionally, I would like to compare the effort that's involved in repairing a TV to the cost of buying a similar replacement TV. Because honestly, I think there's some pros and cons for both options. Unfortunately, I don't have enough room to disassemble a TV in my tiny little studio here, so we're going to go somewhere with some more space. Stay tuned. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Are you a passionate creator looking to bring your next idea to life? PCBWay has got you covered. At PCBWay.com, you can easily order custom PCBs and 3D prints. Their streamlined platform offers instant quotes, expert support, and competitive prices. PCBWay.com ships globally, delivering quality products to your doorstep. Their fast and reliable service lets you stay focused on your projects. PCBWay.com can help you turn your ideas into reality. That's PCBWay.com. Prototype the easy way. Mad Mod. Here is today's subject. This is a TCL 55 inch 4K UHD HDR Roku Smart LED TV. The model number is 55S401. With a manufacturing date of April 2018, this TV is safely out of warranty. These TCL models were extremely popular value TVs, known for offering good picture quality for an affordable price. Even Linus Tech Tips made videos discussing the popularity of these TVs. Let's see what this one does if we power it on. And nothing. The TV turns on, but I can't see anything on the screen. Holding a flashlight up to the screen reveals that the LCD is still working. It's a little dirty, but here you can see the Smart TV's home menu. I can also see a clock icon on the screen. This means that the TV's backlight is not working. LED TVs like this one have a set of very bright LEDs that get filtered through a few layers of light diffusing plastic to provide even illumination to the LCD screen. But enough with the oversimplified explanation. This is what happens when the backlight doesn't work for whatever reason. Time to take it apart and see if we can fix it. Starting with the TV lying face down, remove the TV's legs. Next, we'll need to get under this panel on the back. I'll have to remove all of these screws that are along the edge of the panel. Now the back of the TV can be lifted off and the power switch cable can be unplugged. Now that we can see inside the TV, let's pause for just a moment and take a look at these components. This is the TV's main board. This one is a smart TV, so there's actually a Roku device on this PCB. This board also handles all of the TV's inputs. If your TV has an HDMI port that stops working, you will need to repair or replace the main board. Over on the left side of the TV is the power board. This board converts the voltage from a wall outlet into voltages that can be used by the TV components. If your TV won't turn on at all, or it turns on and turns itself back off, you probably need a new power board. Sometimes a faulty power board can be repaired by replacing the components that have gone bad. Electrolytic capacitors are a very common point of failure in cheap electronics. Look out for any capacitors that appear swollen, dirty, or appear to be leaking. If you find any, go ahead and replace all the capacitors on the board. Also take a look at these resistors. If you see any that appear cracked or burned, they should also be replaced. These burn out when the TV experiences an electrical event like a power surge or a lightning strike. 
Speaking of power surges, if your TV has a fuse, it will probably be located on the power board. Always check the fuse if you're troubleshooting a power problem. Of course, if you don't want to do any soldering, complete power board replacements can be purchased for most TV models. It looks like the ones for this TCL TV are pretty cheap. This is the TCON board, also known as the timing control board. This circuit controls the communication between the main board and the LCD. If your TV works, but it has uniform lines on the display, the TCON board is likely the culprit. The only part I have yet to mention is the LCD itself. Diagnosing a bad LCD panel is usually pretty easy. If your TV appears to be cracked, shattered, or has areas of dead or stuck pixels, the LCD is damaged. At this point, it's time to say goodbye. As far as I know, there's not really a good, realistic, or affordable way to repair an LCD. Your options are buying a new TV or buying the same model for replacement parts. I think the LCD in this TV is just fine, it just needs the backlight behind it to work. So let's continue disassembly. The small PCB shown here is the TV's Wi-Fi adapter. These thick plastic pieces are the mounts for the television's legs. Since we need to replace the backlight, this TV will have to be completely disassembled. This means removing the LCD itself and all the layers between it and the backlight. The delicate connections from the TCON board to the LCD are covered up by these metal panels. Now we can remove the bezel. This means taking out every small screw from all the way around the outside edge of the TV. Let's flip the TV back over so we can pop off the bezel. Before removing the LCD, it must be disconnected from the TCON board by removing these socketed ribbon cables. By carefully unclipping the LCD's connection boards, they can be folded up and taped to the front of the LCD so that they don't get in the way during the rest of this repair. Using a piece of scotch tape might look a little silly, but this is actually the safest way I've found to work on an LCD screen, since these ribbon cable connections are very, very fragile. Next, we can prepare to remove the LCD. In this TV, the panel is held in with clips that go all along the top side. I'm using a prying tool to make sure each clip is undone. Now that the LCD is free, we need to lift it out of the television. If you watch a professional do this, they will likely use a set of suction cups to lift out the LCD without actually touching it. If you don't have any suction cups, you can use a large piece of cardboard to provide a little extra support under the LCD screen. Just make sure the cardboard is clean and not covered in dust before you slide it into the TV. Especially on larger TVs, be very gentle when lifting out the LCD. Large LCDs can flex under their own weight and cause permanent damage. Next, we can remove the layers of light diffusing plastic. We are making sure to keep these in the same orientation they came out of the TV because they will need to go back in in the exact same way. Hey look, now we can see the TV's backlight. There's only a few more parts to remove. Starting off with these little plastic standoffs. These support the LCD from the back side while keeping it a uniform distance from the backlight. Then we can pull out the TV's reflective layer. Now we can see the part that actually needs to be replaced. This TV's backlighting system uses eight LED strips. The ones in this TV are held in by little tiny screws. Some TVs use adhesive behind the LED strips. Now it's time to go shopping. I found a suitable replacement part on Amazon for about $30. I've seen similar light sets selling for even cheaper, so it may just depend on your television's model. 
It has the model numbers that these work for in the product description, so I'm pretty confident that these are the parts that I need. I'll have a link to the lights that I've selected in the video description. Let's unbox the new backlight. I could test the old lights individually to determine whether or not they're all defective, but it's a lot easier just to buy a complete replacement set. The new lights seem to fit perfectly in place, locking back in just like the old ones did. After making sure all the new backlights are plugged in, it's time to start reassembling the TV. I'll be leaving the assembly in this video so that you can see all the steps in the correct order. I'm just going to speed it up by a whole lot. Alright, this is now the moment of truth. Let's plug the TV in and try turning it on. As the TV lights up, I can now breathe a sigh of relief. I am excited to say that after testing it out for a while, this TV is back in action. Now, let's talk about whether or not repairing this TV was even a good idea in the first place. The parts for this repair cost $27.82 and the repair took 2 hours and 30 minutes to complete, with Seth and I both contributing. Keep in mind we were also filming this process and chatting along the way, which may have added a little time to the repair process. If you were to replace this TV with the similar model from TCL, you would be spending about $250? Wow, TVs just keep getting cheaper. It's worth noting you could also purchase a similar model from another budget brand like Hisense or Scepter. In my opinion, you could get even more value out of your purchase by switching to a model that comes with the Google TV platform instead of a Roku. But that's just a matter of preference. Whether you decide to repair your old TV or get a new one, I think there's some pros and cons for both scenarios. So let's start with scenario A. You repair your old broken TV. First off, the pros. Cost is an obvious pro. If you have a tight budget or you just like to be frugal, repair is the way to go. Most replacement parts can be purchased much cheaper than a new TV can. You'll also get some good experience. If you love to learn by taking things apart, a repair like this is a great way to get hands-on experience. You can also avoid creating e-waste. E-waste is created when electronic devices are thrown away like trash to rot in a landfill. E-waste is extremely dangerous because it releases toxic pollutants that poison the soil and groundwater. If you keep using a TV that you repaired yourself, it's probably one less TV that would have ended up at the dump. Now some negative things you may have to think about when repairing your own TV. There's some risk associated. There's always a chance that the repair you attempt will fail. If the diagnosis is incorrect or the TV is damaged during the repair, you may end up no better than where you started. Of course your time is important too. If you're busy and short on time, buying a replacement TV may be more reasonable. And lastly, there's the idea of a warranty. A TV that you've worked on has absolutely no warranty. Meaning, if it were to stop working again in the future, you would again be responsible for the cost of repair or replacement. 
But hey, that shouldn't scare you too much unless you're one of those people who actually buy insurance for your electronics. Now let's take a look at scenario B. You just go buy a new TV. Some of the benefits of buying a new TV are the opportunity to upgrade to new technology. Newer TV models are constantly being released, offering more and more features at better prices. Buying a new TV may be a good opportunity to upgrade to a larger size or a different smart TV's operating system, like the Google TV we mentioned earlier. Of course, buying a new TV is pretty quick and easy. It may not be easy on your bank account, but buying a new TV is pretty painless, especially if you have the TV shipped directly to you. And lastly, a new TV will probably come with a better warranty. You can rest easy for a while knowing that your TV is covered under the manufacturer's warranty. Just hope that it gets honored if anything were to go wrong. For the cons associated with buying a new TV, cost is a really big one. It's true, buying a new TV can be expensive, especially if you keep shopping around for nicer and more expensive upgrades. Another potential downside is you have this potential for creating e-waste. So even if you do get a new TV, make sure to dispose of your old one by taking it to an e-waste processing facility where it can be recycled. Personally, I'm a fan of trying to repurpose my electronics to use them as long as possible, but I can definitely see the value in buying a new TV. Be sure to leave a comment down below this video letting me know if you would rather repair your TV or buy a new one. I want to extend a massive thank you to the Jackson Travels for their collaboration on this project, especially Seth. He was a lot of help repairing and filming all of this. The TV already has a cozy new home inside their studio, displaying all of their awesome footage from theme parks, restaurants, and events. I'll have a link to their channel in the video description so you can go check it out. As always, if you like this type of content, don't forget to click the subscribe button and go watch some of my other electronics videos. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.